Sigma 35mm f1.2 DGD and Art is a lens without compromises on image quality and bright aperture, but also size, weight and price. It's just ubiquitous. I've loaned this lens for a couple of weeks to try to understand if I'm ready to carry around this monster for its gorgeous image quality or if my tiny and two times cheaper Sony 35mm f1.8 lens is good enough for all my needs and would you guys tell the difference? Let's find out. Let's start off with the size and weight. Sigma weighs 1 kg and 90 grams, versus Sony lens weighs only 281 gram. That's a huge difference, guys. Also, the Sigma lens is too fat for the tripod plate to be properly placed without a riser plate or a cage on my Sony A7S III, which is very annoying. So overall, this lens is a giant and it's pretty heavy, guys. In the kit you do get a very nice case or a bag, but it's really bulky. And also you get a huge lens hood with rubberized ring, which is a dust magnet. I don't like this design to be honest. And also it has a small release mechanism button. And of course you'll get front and back caps, which are also pretty big ones. And overall the quality of accessories is top notch. And now let's talk build quality. As you can see guys, this lens is a premium lens. It's made out of mostly plastic and metal, which is great. I do like everything about the build quality of this lens it's very sturdy and it's very heavy as well <laughs> i'm keep saying this it does have a weather sealing gasket and overall the lens is weather sealed as well and on the lens itself you do get a number of control points the af mf switch of course you do get aperture control ring which can be clicked or declicked it's a very nice addition for videographers it's pretty smooth and also you get a focus hold button or a custom button and a huge focus ring which has some issues, I'll talk about those in a few minutes. But overall there is a lot of control points and the quality of this lens is very high. But to be honest, the 35F18 from Sony is my go-to lens for more than two years now and I have no complaints about this lens as well, in terms of build quality and overall materials. The filter thread size difference is also <laughs> huge, guys. 55mm filters on this Sony lens and 82mm on the Sigma lens. 82mm is a pretty common filter thread, but all of those filters are much more expensive. You have to keep this in mind while buying some such a lens, you'll need some filters. Of course, I use the ND64 all the time while shooting with this lens outdoors during the daylight. So now let's test the autofocus capabilities side by side. As you can see, guys, those two lenses are doing pretty good job. But if we slow down the footage, we can definitely start to see that the Sigma is more slow because it has a ton of glass to move inside of this lens. And probably it's really obvious to you guys that it's slower than the Sony 35. And one more big problem to me is that the Sigma is trying to catch my eye, but it loses the focus from time to time and tries to refocus. So it catches the eye, but it's like half a second out of focus, then it's in focus, then again out of focus. So it's not mm, keeping up with my eye, which is a bad thing. And I had my autofocus settings in the camera set to the fastest AF speed and to the most responsive setting as well. So now it's time to talk about image quality, vignette and distortion. As you can see right here, the distortion is minimal. It's a barrel distortion, but it's a minimal barrel distortion, nothing too crazy, guys. And also we have a pretty huge vignette at f1.2. It gets much better by f1.8 and by f2.8 it goes away completely. Now let's have a look at the top corner sharpness. It's pretty sharp to be honest at f1.2 the corners are pretty dark as well but the sharpness itself and the level of detail is great and by f4 we get the most of this lens now let's compare the sigma at f1.2 and the sony at f1.8 the sharpness in the middle is pretty much comparable but also the vignette is pretty strong on f1.8 sony lens it's almost as strong as the sigma's f1.2 maybe a bit better having a look at the top corner at f1.2 the sigma lens is sharper than the Sony lens in the corner at f1.8, which is really impressive. And here are two lenses at f1.8. You can see that the Sony lens has more vignette, it's really clear. And when we have a look in the corner, the sharpness difference is now more dramatic and more visible. The Sigma is doing a very good job here. Here are both lenses at f2.8. Now the differences are not that big, they are both pretty sharp, and the vignette goes away by f4 on both lenses completely. 
Now let's talk about the real-world performance and image quality. First of all, let me say that the 35mm on a full-frame camera is my favorite focal length and I've been using an ND64 filter to be able to shoot at f1.2 during daylight. Yes, the images you get with this lens are great looking and sharp. The bokeh is beautiful too, but I had a couple of issues holding me back from using this lens on a daily basis or purchasing it. First of all, it's too heavy for sturdy handheld shots, at least to me, and even for the monopod shots I felt like it's a bit too bulky. So I had to stabilize literally all the shots I shot with this lens, even though I was using the steady shot active most of the time. But with my tiny Sony 35mm f1.8 I shoot handheld most of the time and rarely use any post stabilization. Second thing that really annoyed me even with the fastest sensitivity AF and speed settings in my camera, Sigma tends to lose focus for a second and then grab it back when you're doing some slow push ins or outs. And I do those quite often to be honest and my 35mm gets the work done, it sticks to the eye perfectly and you just don't see the work of autofocus at all. As I said before, I guess it's too much glass in the Sigma lens to move around and for the AF motor to work with, so that is why it's struggling in this area but it really bugs me. And the third, manual focus ring. It's focused by wire and it's not linear. Also it is very slow and unpredictable and it's easy to miss the manual focus because of it. And by the way, it's not also an issue with my Sony 35mm f1.8. The focus ring on it is also focused by wire but it's much more precise and linear. And on the Sigma lens, the focus throw is that big that you have to turn the ring multiple times to get from the minimum focusing distance to infinity, which is also not that convenient, at least to me. Otherwise, the Sigma 35mm f1.8 is a very solid lens. So now let's talk chromatic aberrations, guys. You can definitely see those purple and green fringes on the branches and on these fans. Clearly f1.2 is not the best aperture to work with when you shoot something very contrasty like branches against the sky and comparing the Sigma to the Sony lens and the same apertures we can see kind of the same uh, performance right here in terms of chromatic aberrations. They do get better by f2.2 and they completely go away by f2.8 on both lenses. In terms of focus breathing, the Sigma is not really terrible. It's a very nice performance to be honest right here. And the Sony lens is famous for almost not having any focus breathing at all. And that is why a lot of videographers love this lens. But overall, both lenses show pretty nice performance here. And now let's talk flares guys, Sigma at f1.2 and Sony at f1.8 without a lens hood, you can see clearly that the lens flares are kinda similar on those two lenses, I would say the Sigma shows even better performance wide open on this test, now let's have a look at both of those at f1.8. Yeah, you can see some flaring and glaring a little bit. The Sigma has more contrast, which is also a good sign. So overall, the flaring performance, even without a lens hood on the Sigma lens is great. Now let's have a look at f2.8. It's more saturated, I would say. It's more vibrant uh, in terms of the flare on the Sigma lens. The Sony looks more pale and less pronounced, but overall I'm pretty satisfied. And look at those sun stars on the Sigma lens at f8. It does have a, a pretty big ring at f8, so you gotta be careful with that. And at f16, the sun star on the Sigma lens is beautiful and you also do the circular rainbow shape on the Sigma. And now let's have a look at the lens hood on and to be honest I don't see a real difference with and without a lens hood. Probably it's not as saturated in terms of colors on the Sigma but overall I don't think that the lens hood is doing something dramatic if you want to you can leave it on. The minimum focusing distance on the Sigma lens is 30 centimeters whereas the Sony lens has only 22 centimeters. You can see the difference right here and remember that at f1.2 you'll get like a millimeter of a focal plane so yeah you have to stop down to at least f5 to be able to see at least something except for the blurry backgrounds and also the image quality at f1.8 will be not the greatest at the minimal focusing distance try to close the aperture at least to f2.8 f4 for the best performance here i also tried out just for fun this macro adapter macro lens macro diopter you can call it and here is 
the result you can get much much closer of course the image quality is not that great when you use this diopter but if you do need to take one pretty close-up shot without having a macro lens in your kit you can use this diopter and you'll get the job done I guess this is what you've been waiting for, the bokeh comparison and test. During the daylight, the bokeh on both lenses really looks outstanding, but the Sigma is the king of bokeh, I guess. Look at those uh, bokeh balls. Yeah, we do get some cat's eye shape towards the corners and a little bit of swirliness towards the corners, but it's really beautiful. At f1.8 it looks a bit busier than I wish it was but also really nice and great and when we compare those two side by side you can see that the Sigma is still looking softer and more creamy than the Sony at f1.8 here is the closer look at those the Sigma does provide you with kind of mm, swirliness in the bokeh balls but it's okay at f2.8 it also looks very nice that's my daughter Xuxia by the way shout out to her and thumbs up for her as well and here is kind of a almost a minimal focus in distance a very close-up shot of her at f1.2 you see a lot more blurry background than the f1.8 on the sony lens so to be honest i do prefer the sigma's bokeh but it's not that bad in terms of the bokeh on the sony lens as well And now let's have a look during the night time. As you can see, we do have some cat's eye shape, as I said before, but overall the quality of bokeh is very nice. You can almost now see the texture inside of those bokeh balls, and overall they are very, very good looking. So now let's step down from f1.2 to f1.8, and overall the quality of this bokeh is just beautiful and amazing. So now let's step down from f1.8 on both lenses to f16, and let's see if they stay this round and I guess they do stay rounder on the Sony lens no matter that the Sigma lens has 11 bladed aperture And here it how it looks on 51200 ISO in S-Log3 at f1.2. Um, you can say it's a bit noisy, it is, but it was looking like this for my own eyes. So probably, yeah, <laughs> you can get some pretty nice night shots. And also here is the shot on 12800 ISO and you can even see some stars that I was not able to see with my own eyes. I was surprised that we actually do have some stars behind the sky. Uh, I only could see those in this lens and camera combination. And here is the difference between f1.2 and f1.8. It's not huge, but it is there. Now let's have a look at the coma smearing. I would say Sigma shows not the best performance at f1.2, but when you step down to f1.8, it gets much, much better. And now let's have a look at two lenses side by side. I would say the coma smearing is really worse on the Sony lens. The Sigma is doing a great job. And also the Sun Stars as well look better on the Sigma lens. So guys, to conclude, Sigma 35mm f1.2 DGDN, DN stands for D's nuts, right? Art lens is an optical miracle with beautiful image quality but with too many compromises in my opinion. I cannot justify switching my 35mm f1.8 Sony lens for the Sigma lens due to the size, weight, price, slow and unreliable manual focus ring and not perfect autofocus performance. And I'm absolutely fine with the f1.8 aperture, it catches enough light and gives me nice blurry background. And don't forget that there is a ton of cheaper and smaller than Sigma f1.8 two 35 millimeter lenses on the market for instance with f1.4 aperture they are not that bulky have beautiful image quality like sigma's own 35 millimeter f1.4 art lens anything sigma tried to show us their capabilities in extreme lens engineering and a little over complicated things with this lens so what do you think guys, is the Sigma 35mm f1.2 lens worth a try and would you keep it in your kit? Let me know all of your thoughts down below. If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I see my videos and hit the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.